So open angle glaucoma treatment. Well, in this video, I get to review the different eye drops for glaucoma and glaucoma surgery. So let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome. This is Dr. Joe Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, bringing the best in education about the eyes, vision, and vision products. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Also, at any point throughout the video, check out the show notes and links below for further information about everything that we go over. Also, keep in mind this video is part of a complete video series about glaucoma. So if you're new here, that's great, but don't miss out on all the other good videos about glaucoma, and I'll hook you up with a link to that in the description below, as well as in the YouTube card up above. Otherwise, let's go over open angle glaucoma treatments. Now, when it comes to glaucoma treatment, there are many different treatments out there. However, the same concept across the board for all those treatments is the same. We treat glaucoma by lowering the pressure of the eye. And we can do that with medicated eye drops. We can do that with laser surgeries. We can even do that with more intense surgeries in the operating room where we physically make an increased drainage canal. Or we can do implants to, again, increase the drainage of the eye or we can use a combination of all those different strategies. So uh, overall, the treatment outlook for glaucoma is usually very good. Now, if you are diagnosed with open angle glaucoma here in the United States, and you're gonna be started on treatment, you're usually started on a medication called a prostaglandin analog. These eye drops come with a little kind of blue, green, almost a teal colored cap. Uh, now, I don't have any affiliation with brands or anything. One of the more common ones is called Zalatan, uh, the generic form is called latanoprost. Now these drops are excellent. The reason they're prescribed usually first line is because one, they're pretty cheap. Uh, the generic form it has been out since I think like the mid 90s and overall they're pretty cheap for people to take. Also they're incredibly effective. So just using this drop one time at night, every day, in both eyes will lower the pressure of the eyes anywhere from 25 to 33%. That's an excellent decrease in eye pressure. And so for, again, the, the kind of the cost benefit of taking this medication and that significant drop in eye pressure uh, makes this really the first line for, first line treatment for glaucoma. Now, because this glaucoma medication is uh, used so commonly, there are some side effects I wanted to kind of mention. So if you're taking this medication already, you could notice that these drops make the eyes a little bit red or hyperemic. That's what we call it in the in the clinic. But usually you're using this drop right before bedtime, so you're going to bed anyway, so it's not really that huge of a deal. Some people will notice their eyelashes grow a lot longer, thicker, and fuller. Uh, actually, a lot of our lady patients who are put on this medication, they don't really mind too much because it's basically like getting a prescription for Latisse, uh, the medication that can actually grow your eyelashes longer. In fact, they're the same classification of medication. They're both prostaglandin analogs. Uh, now, beyond just that, this medication is known for helping change the eye color. Uh, now, no one really prescribes this for this reason, but as a side effect, people with lighter colored eyes, like myself, I have blue eyes, if I was to start taking this medication and I took it for a long time, a couple of years, then the pigment of my eye, you could actually maybe notice it start to get darker, and eventually some people even can develop kind of like light brown eyes from taking this medication. Uh, one of the more lesser common known side effects of a prostaglandin analog is it changes the fat deposition around the eyes. So usually we don't prescribe a prostaglandin analog in just one eye by themselves, but occasionally if somebody is using it in just one eye and not the other, that one eye could start to look like it's sunken back deeper inside the skull. And that's just because the fat around the eye is just not kind of depositing normally as it would be in the eye that's not taking that medication. Now, beyond just using a prostaglandin analog, if your doctor feels that that medication either isn't right for you, or maybe it's not being effective enough, maybe you need your eye pressure lowered even more, they'll consider adding another medication. Now, it's always up to your doctor which medication they choose for you next and which one's the best for you based on your health and what medications you're taking. But oftentimes, here in the United States, probably the second most commonly prescribed eye drop for glaucoma fits into a classification called beta blockers. Uh, one of the most famous names is called Timolol. There's a couple of different concentrations of Timolol. There's eye, Timolol eye drops, there's Timolol gel drops. They're a little bit thicker. Usually these drops come in a, ca, uh, come in a bottle with a yellow cap. 
and these drops are usually prescribed at least once a day. I've seen it prescribed twice a day, but usually at least once a day and in the mornings. Uh, these medications do lower the eye pressure by about 25%, and they do that by decreasing the formation of the fluid inside the eye. Prostaglandins actually help decrease the fluid by help actually getting the fluid to drain out of the eye better. So again, prostaglandins help drain the fluid out of the eye, and then Timolol or beta blockers will help decrease the formation of the fluid inside the eye. And so if you actually prescribe, if a doctor was to prescribe these both together, it's a very powerful effect. Now, of course, with latanoprost, uh, you know, we have to watch about some of those complications, those contraindications or side effects. With Timolol, the few side effects that can occur, uh, usually your doctor has to kind of screen to make sure you don't have a history of asthma or have breathing issues like with COPD. And there's other type of medications that could interact. So again, those are things your doctor will consider. Now beyond using either latanoprost, uh, again the teal green cap, or you got timolol, the beta blocker that comes with a yellow cap, then there's other medications. Uh, one that comes in an orange cap is called a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, or CAIs, and that's either gonna be called a brinzolamide or dorazolamide. Now these medications, uh, they actually do lower the eye pressure by decreasing the formation of the fluid, just like timolol, but on their own, they only decrease the eye pressure just a little bit. So usually these ones are used in combination with something like Timolol. Uh, and that actually helps amplify the amount of decreased eye pressure by up to about 15%. Now, again, these medications, if they're prescribed alone, usually are three times a day, but oftentimes they're prescribed just twice a day because they're using it in combination with the other eye drops. Beyond the carbonic and hydrase inhibitors, then there's a medication that comes in a purple cap, and that one's called an alpha agonist, and that one is called bromonidine. Now, bromonidine, this alpha agonist, not only decreases the formation of fluid inside the eye, but it also increases the outflow of the fluid inside the eye. So this medication, again, works pretty well. Uh, oftentimes, it is used as an adjunct to either latanoprost or perhaps timolol. But again, these are all the, actually the major classifications of the different medications, the different eye drops for glaucoma. Now beyond just these drops that we mentioned, again, there are combo drops out there. These are medications that are kind of like having the shampoo and conditioner combos that you have in the shower. These medications are basically the mix of the other ones we mentioned. Uh, they work fantastic, but they're basically just put together like that to make it more convenient, rather than having like five or six bottles that you gotta dump in your eye throughout the day. It just makes it more convenient, increases the adherence to the medication, uh, things like that that. There is another medication that just came out maybe about a year ago. I think it finally got FDA approved in 2017, and that one's called Ropressa. That's the brand name. I have no association with that brand. But that medication actually helps, again, drain the fluid out of the eye through the trabecular meshwork. That's one of, the, again, that ways that the fluid actually drains out of the eye. Uh, being that this medication is newer, it is a bit more expensive. However, it is kind of making uh, its run for its money because because uh, it actually has such a good effect at lowering the eye pressure. I think it's also pretty close to that of a prostaglandin analog. Um, now again, it's just a newer medication. Wanted to kind of throw it out there. I don't think too many people are using it yet, um, but it could be on the rise as a future big name for glaucoma treatment. Now I also want to mention that if you are taking any of these eye drops, it is very likely that, and a lot of people will start off taking these medications and and it, because glaucoma has no symptoms, people will start taking it and then they'll just stop taking their eye drops or it's easy for them to forget. But it's really important that if you're taking these drops for any reason for glaucoma, you try not to forget, don't stop doing it unless your doctor told you to stop taking them. Uh, really, you know, damage from glaucoma is permanent. There's no way for us to back the train up and get vision back from this damage. So really taking these eye drops is the only way for your eye doctor to control the pressure and prevent or delay further vision loss. And if you're somebody who's taking any of these eye drops and you're having difficulty getting the drops in, I did make another video on how to put eye drops in on your own, and I'll hook that up here in the YouTube card up above as well as in the description below. 
Now beyond taking those medications, there are a couple other treatments, and that involves different types of glaucoma surgery. The two major forms of surgery that we're gonna cover today is laser trabeculoplasty, and then we're gonna roughly review some of the different implants and the different kind of more invasive procedures that can be used for glaucoma. Now, uh, the first one is laser trabeculoplasty. This actually, is, I actually really like laser trabeculoplasty because this is a way for us to pretty much get rid of some of the eye drops if somebody doesn't want to take them. Now, laser trabeculoplasty involves putting a special type of mirror contact lens on the eye while the patient sits behind a small laser device we have in the clinic. And then the doctor will activate this laser and they'll actually burn in, burn little drainage canals uh, into the already existing drainage canal of the eye. So they basically widen the drainage canal to increase the outflow. Now this procedure isn't ideal for everybody with open angle glaucoma. You basically do need some type of pigment in the drainage canal of your eye for this to work. If you don't have any pigment, then you are not an ideal candidate for this procedure. However, by having this done, again, we can lower the eye pressure, and some people can lower the pressure so much that they maybe can stop taking all their other eye drops. So they don't have to pay for those drops, they don't have to take them throughout the day. Uh, however, saying, however, then now that I said that, there are sometimes people will get that procedure and then they still have to be on eye drops. So it's not a panacea, it's not a cure-all. This, this sort of treatment, however, is not uh, always first line. It can actually be done just about at any point uh, throughout the treatment period. The only real big downsides, again, is that it, it's not available for everybody and it actually tends to wear off. So after about five years uh, of having the benefits of having this procedure, it can wear off and has to be repeated again. So this is a fantastic option and I do think it's great for some people, uh, but you have to also, there's a few other things you have to weigh out with your eye doctor, uh, with the patient to make sure, hey, they're a good candidate. Also, this procedure isn't always covered by insurance. And so sometimes uh, this can cost quite a bit of money to have done. I've actually seen it anywhere from four to up to like $7,000 to have this procedure completed here in the United States. So again, if it's something you're interested in, if maybe you're having trouble taking medications, talk to your doctors about this option of having a laser trabeculoplasty. Now beyond just taking medications to lower the eye pressure or having the laser procedure to lower the pressure, if for some reason the pressure isn't low enough or the advance or the glaucoma continues to advance, then your doctor will recommend more intensive, um, more invasive surgeries. Now these surgeries are always our last line of defense. They're not recommended right away because they are associated with more complications. Uh, classically, we have the trabeculectomy or maybe an external tube shunt such as the Ahmed valve. These do lower the eye pressure considerably. However, they are associated with more complications. Uh, so now we're recommending what are called MIGs. These are minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries. And these usually involve really tiny implants inside of the eye, again, to decrease that eye pressure. And what's great is that these can oftentimes be, be combined with other surgeries, such as cataract surgery. So it's kind of like getting a two for one. So th these are excellent. They're less complication rates, uh, and they usually lower the pressure considerable amounts. Now, if you're gonna have any of these surgeries, uh, do keep in mind that you are gonna be on several eye drops before the surgery, probably even more eye drops after the surgery, uh, and sometimes even after surgeries, uh, people are still on eye pressure lowering medications. You have to see your doctor several times a year just to keep that pressure low and verify that it's in a safe level. Uh, and if for some reason these surgeries really just don't take well, it doesn't it doesn't go well for you, sometimes they have to be repeated again. And yeah, that kind of stinks, but we have to do whatever we can to preserve vision. All right, so eye health question of the day. Which glaucoma treatments have you heard of? Which are some of your favorites? Do you have any other questions? Please go ahead and comment in the section below. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe if you're new, and share this video with any friends or family that you think it might help. Otherwise, if you'd like to catch other cool videos from Dr. Eye Health, just click or tap the screen up here to the side or click or tap the screen down here. Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Joe Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, bringing the best in education about the eyes, vision, and vision products. Keep an eye on it. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, so I got a couple of, qu uh, <clears throat> hey guys, so I had a, um, okay. Hey guys, so I had a